Hello and welcome to part one of What Even Happens in Death Stranding. This is a difficult story to discuss and an easy one to get wrong. I did my best to untangle its many strands and reconnect its dots, but if you figured something out that I didn't, feel free to leave it in the comments. That being said, let's go. We'll need to begin with what can only be called the metaphysics of Death Stranding. As the European Organization for Nuclear Research, or CERN, writes, there really is something mysterious about how existence sprang into being with the Big Bang. The Big Bang should have created an equal amount of matter and antimatter, meaning from the perspective of physics, our universe should contain nothing more but leftover energy from when contact between matter and antimatter particles trigger so-called annihilation events to cancel each other out. But instead, of course, we inhabit a universe composed of mostly matter, the only reason why life is possible. Now, on our planet, over the eons of geologic time, there have been a handful of so-called mass extinction events, where huge numbers of species have gone extinct almost at once. This seems to be the universe as a physical system's attempt to restore its own equilibrium. In the metaphysics of Death Stranding, life itself is a kind of aberration, an imbalanced equation in need of correcting. Once, there was an explosion. A big bang that gave birth to time and space. Thing is, it was more like a big fluke. All that matter and antimatter should have cancelled itself out, leaving nothing. But somehow, somehow a tiny speck of matter survived. Just enough. Enough to make this world and everything in it. A world that shouldn't be, a world out of balance. Order inevitably gives way to chaos. Everything that lives must inevitably die. It's like the universe is trying to return us to the nothing we came from. Strandings, of which there have been several, were cosmic attempts to do just that, to reconnect the worlds of life and death, fully once and for all, to cancel existence itself out, to balance the equation whose remainder divides life and death. These are called strandings because they create vastly different worlds than the ones that existed before, killing off every species that could not adapt. The irony is that each stranding has thereby only made life stronger, spurned evolution more. Crucially, the sixth mass extinction event that we are currently actually living through is the first one caused by humans. In Death Stranding, that will lead to the last extinction event, the last stranding. Yes, each extinction event before now in the game was itself a Death Stranding. But while other strandings were apparently caused by changes to, say, the environment, the most recent stranding, which I'll call Stranding F, happened not only thanks to a wearing away of the divide separating life and death, but a warping of the very fabric of space-time. It has not only dramatically altered the geography and climate of America, it has, thanks it seems to chiralium, also warped humanity's sense of linear time, and tangled up causes and effects. Because of all this warping, I believe that Death Stranding F was in fact the origin for every Death Stranding in the past. All of them involved what I take to be clues for this, like how each so-called extinction entity had a strange umbilical cord, how each event bore the presence of chiralium, which comes from the beach, and how the final extinction entity, Amelie, occupies the mother of all beaches, the beach heart. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What makes humans special is our powers of conceptualizing death. Our thoughts, dreams, and perceptions seem to impact the world of the game thanks to the mysterious phenomenon unique, it seems, to human beings of the beach. As you might have guessed, death is a very crucial concept for the game. Death is posited as the primary catalyst for all of human history and culture, a fear of death and a will to leave something behind. 
even evolution itself in Death Stranding is proposed as a survival response against death, a rebellion, a fight against it. According to ancient Egypt, a tradition with great importance for the game, the body, or Ha, was merely a vessel for the Ka, or soul. Death marked not a single event, but the gradual process of their disconnection. In Death Stranding, after leaving the body, the Ka would gradually cross through a great sea, called the Seam, to wind up at the halfway point between life and death, the beach. Then the Ka, or soul, would continue on into the land of the dead. This mirrors, in a way, how life may have arguably begun in the ocean eons ago. Now it gets confusing, but essentially we can't really pinpoint when exactly the beach as a phenomena began, whether it was always part of the life and death cycle or something that only emerged after the Death Stranding. But either way, essentially there seem to be two senses of the word beach. Each person has a discrete beach, which belongs to them only as sort of a byproduct or a reflection of their soul, getting shaped by their minds. But then there is the beach as a unified concept, the multiverse or meta beach if you will, which refers collectively to all beaches at once. Death Stranding F made such a huge impact by apparently ripping the fabric-like boundary separating life and death, not to mention past, present, and future. How it did this was by somehow disrupting the normal flow of cause traveling from our world of matter to the netherworld of antimatter. The flow into the beach as the halfway point between realms was reversed, so that instead of dead souls traveling from our world to the afterlife, the dead now flow back into the realm of the living. The newly dead can evidently no longer complete death as a process of transition, becoming stranded instead, either in our world if their body remains intact, as so-called beached things, or somewhere on the beach, which serves now as a kind of purgatory for them. This feedback loop of life and death caused by Death Stranding F also brought the regular collision between matter and antimatter, now known as void outs. But what was the initial spark that caused the Death Stranding? The difficulty in summarizing or condensing the events of Death Stranding is that the game takes place in a world where this cataclysm, the titular Death Stranding, has fundamentally warped the very fabric of space-time. From the so-called chiralium that disrupts the flow of linear time to the aforementioned beach, that mysterious hinterland between life and death that lies completely outside time altogether. What makes this so challenging to understand, let alone explain, is this means once an event like the Death Stranding takes place, it has already occurred before and will occur again. Time has no meaning to me. I am not a line. I am a single point. Think of it this way. Imagine I have a piece of paper. That paper is linear time. It has a top and a bottom, a left and a right. But if I fold it up like an accordion into six different sections and then punch a hole through it with, say, a pencil, what happens when I unfold the paper? We find not one hole in one fold, but six different holes in all six different sections. That basically describes the Death Stranding. It didn't happen at a single point in linear time, but to time and through time itself, punching a hole through the whole shebang, a la time compression, as first articulated by geographer David Harvey in 1989's The Condition of Postmodernity. As a result, things have changed not only for the present and the future, but retroactively for the past. There are holes in every which section. Hopefully that makes a little more sense. So what caused this puncture, this big bang in time and space? Well, that's hard to say, again due to the nature of the bang. But whatever caused this was, is, and will be, Triggered on five different occasions over geologic time, mass extinction events. Strandings, meaning events where life as we, the living, know it nearly has come to an end. And in all five previous strandings, there was a single organism at the center, 
a ground zero, a so-called extinction entity. This entity in all five cases, from mammoth to neanderthal to dinosaur to trilobite, could be identified by the possession of a bizarre umbilical cord. This cord is a link to the other side, to the world of the dead. And latent within these cords is a particle that remains impervious to the passage of time, chiralium. Five past extinction events were all initialized by that single organism, that extinction entity. And someday, these will culminate in a sixth and final one, the last stranding. Death stranding, whatever caused it, was merely the beginning of this process. Well, it turns out we actually do eventually find out what caused it. This catastrophe occurred inadvertently thanks to the final extinction entity. A woman split across the life-death divide into two discrete identities. The woman in question was born Bridget Strand. But in the other world, she is known as Amelie. If the forces of nature have sought to purge existence of itself since the Big Bang, it seems Amelie is their ultimate weapon. Every stranding has apparently been an echo, or a foreshadowing, of the final one that she will cause. I can't go with you. All I can do is try to spare you the worst. Why do you have to stay on the beach? Sam. I am the beach. All her life, Bridget was plagued with visions of the last stranding. But instead of willingly carrying out her destiny to cause it, Bridget tried to understand it, though it also became her destiny as a kind of cosmic punishment to develop uterine cancer. It was during surgery on her uterus in her early 20s that Bridget's Ka, in a near-death experience, first separated from her Ha over to the beach. Yet Bridget's body, her Ha, lived on. The result was a sort of religious transformation that split her in two. When Amelie and Bridget split in two, their discovery of the beach led them to realize something. If the beach connected as a crossroads both to the realms of the living and the dead, then maybe past memories of the fallen could be recovered and used to protect the futures of the living. Maybe by uncovering the truth behind the beach, the five previous strandings, and everything, Bridget and Amelie could prevent their lifetime of horrible, apocalyptic visions from coming true, not destroying, but saving the world. But doing so would involve the mysterious substance known as chiral matter. Like dark matter, chiral matter has been lurking in our universe undiscovered ever since the Big Bang. Apparently it originated from the beach, which it turns out itself originated as Amelie's beach. Like I've been saying, Amelie's split from Bridget's Ha caused retroactive changes to all of history, and the formation of beaches going all the way back to the Big Bang used hers as the mother beach. This is one of those changes. If beaches were likened to a multiverse, hers would appear to exist on a higher plane than ours. I can walk the beaches of others, but hers is beyond my reach. It's invisible, <laughs> inaccessible, even to fragile, I fear. Uh, imagine it as a circulatory system, if you will. Each of our beaches is a single capillary. But Amelie's beach is the heart that pumps blood to the rest of us. Knowing the dead still existed in another reality, beyond the beach and the ocean between worlds the seam, in contact in some way with her other sided doppelganger, Amelie, Bridget now realized that if contact with the other reality could be made, maybe the cause of the previous strandings could be found out and the horrible premonitions of her nightmares avoided. Saving the world would mean Amelie and Bridget constructing an information network as a bridge between the beach and our world. Now, ever since her near-death experience, Bridget took on a kind of supernatural power to enchant people's senses. This charisma attracted to her scores of die-hard followers, who soon elevated her into the position of America's vice president. From this vaulted position, Bridget, even prior to the stranding, preached the gospel that in its wake would be known as American Reconstructionism, 
Bridget slash Amelie, two forms of one essence, believed the only way to stop annihilation was by bridging America's extreme divides, by restoring its faith in institutions, and along the way building a network to route data to and from the beach, using that mysterious substance, chiral matter. But though Amelie slash Bridget understood the existence of chiralium in the beach, the rest of the living world did not. Not at least until the first void out. I realized the beach was connected to the world of the dead, which meant that somewhere out beyond it were the memories of time itself, including those of every organism that had ever lived. 4.6 billion years of biological history, a history that might even stretch back to the creation of the universe. The chiral network and everything that followed was born from my pursuit of that knowledge. By passing data through the beach, we were unbound by the restrictions of time. Simulations that would have taken years or more were simple and effortless. Everything that the Earth had lost and forgotten could be reconstructed and reclaimed. But shortly after we began our research, America saw its first void out. Void outs, by the way, are annihilation events caused by the collision of matter with antimatter which releases massive amounts of energy, like, say, a nuclear bomb. Now, for most people, and for most of the game, that void out is said to mark the Death Stranding. But this, strictly speaking, is inaccurate. Death Stranding was not the first void out itself. Rather, the Death Stranding was what made that void out retroactively possible to begin with. And it would not come until later. What directly caused that void out seems to be a doctor during an operation to save an unborn baby from a brain dead mother. When he came into contact, as he touched the umbilical cord with a BT or beached thing from the other side. Beached things are haws or souls that cannot reach the world of the dead while they remain tethered to our side by umbilical cords. I think the BT in question was likely the Ka of the brain dead mother, who remained tethered to our world via the umbilical cord that connected her to her still living, unborn child. But according to Bridget, it was only following this contact made by the doctor, by replicating the conditions that she initiated a program designed to connect our world with the other one. But shortly after we began our research, America saw its first void out. I thought I was running out of time, that my nightmares were becoming a reality. So I raced to complete the chiral network as quickly as possible. The past held all the answers. If only I could find a way to piece them together. A network that bridged our world and the beach. That might do it, I believed. So I started researching bridge babies, children bound to the world of the dead. This led to the so-called Bridge Baby experiments, of which our protagonist, Sam Porter Bridges, was a member. And this, in turn, led to Bridget accidentally killing Sam as a Bridge Baby, something we'll discuss much later. Then, as Amelie trying to bring him back to life. This upset the balance between the two worlds and allowed the Death Stranding, in the first place, retroactively to occur. Thanks to the beach and the way it's a sort of haven, a whole dimension outside our linear notions of time, before the Death Stranding could happen, it had already happened. Think of it like fate, or like the paper holes analogy. We're told over and over again that the Stranding and Iralium have both fundamentally warped humanity's sense of space-time, and our ability even to understand life in our new reality. I think it's because the beach exists beyond the bounds of linear time that the cause and effect process of the game's story beats don't seem at first to make sense, don't follow a linear, traditional chain of cause and effect. In our linear world, however, some chronology to certain events can still be traced, like the characters across the game, by digging up old records. Fragmentary traces of the past can be used as the basis for a full, if imperfect, reconstruction, but there'll be no guarantee the complete picture we form from this reconstruction will correspond to the past as it really occurred. We can only get so far. Now remember I said the very concept of linear time is tangled up in this game? Well, this is the big case in point. 
Death Stranding was caused by something Bridget did after it had already occurred. Confusing, but as far as I can tell, true. We know that because Bridget brought Sam back from the dead, it retroactively allowed the Death Stranding to take place. Because this took place on the beach, outside the flow of time, it was able to cause something in our world retroactively in the past. If there was a sequence of events, it would go like this. Beginning, the BB experiments. Middle, Sam's resurrection. End, the Death Stranding that erodes the boundary between life and death. In the past. Mama sort of explains some of this by explaining the chiral network and how it compares to the light of the stars and how they travel over space-time. I pulled the trigger twice that day. I knew at once I'd made a mistake. I found your beach and looked everywhere for you. Sam. There you are. once and for all. It's okay. I know the way. But in doing so, I upset the fundamental balance between life and death. I just wanted to save you. entity. It's my fate to lead our species to extinction. But that moment, you became part of that fate. You became a repatriate, and dooms started spreading my nightmares to others throughout the world. It was me that got you and everyone with dooms into this. Not long after, the Death Stranding occurred. The dead clung to our world, and BTs used my beach to cross over and devour them, triggering more void outs. A catalyst that would set the world on a path to extinction. The effect of Amelie's decision manifested in our linear space-time before the cause, or at least the events over here that led to the events over there. By sending Sam back to our world, Amelie disrupted the balance separating life and death retroactively, as I said. The point at which this curtain, if you will, between the worlds is weakest happens to be where a mother without a ka, meaning for example, one who's brain dead, still has her ha or living body connected to this world via her unborn baby's umbilical cord. There's a mysterious connection in the game between the ka's of mothers and ha's of children, a link that allows the baby to act in this situation as a kind of bridge or doorway to the other side. When the doctor touched the umbilical cord, it brought him into contact with the BT, and because that meant matter and antimatter collided, which was only possible thanks to Amelie's resurrection of Sam in the future, it sparked an annihilation event, a void out. Now, this triggered a sort of chain reaction of simultaneous explosions all around the world, a hint towards the paper holes analogy I mentioned. The craters that these void outs left exposed the global atmosphere to chiralium for the first time, which contaminated the water cycle, poisoned the clouds and the rain, and draped what became of the American continent in a permanent shroud. 
It was then that Bridget, now Vice President of America and face of the movement called Reconstructionism, secretly bid the government to conduct research into whether recreating aspects of this event could lead to the detection of BTs. Eventually this would spiral into a project tasked with establishing a new comm system that would utilize chiralium in the beach, known as the chiral network, all in order to reconnect us with the trove of data that the Death Stranding and its effects on the environment wiped out. Obviously, this also risked causing more void outs, so these experiments were conducted in secret on the island of Manhattan. One day, as the president looked on in person, another void out took place there, obliterating the entire island. Should this video get 40,000 views in the first two weeks, we'll return to see what happens next with part two of what even happens in Death Stranding. Until next time, boss.